Okay, so our mirror box is basically just awaiting finishing and the mirror box cover, which we can get to later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw out, which I've already done here, I'm filming that, the, uh, the drawing for the rocker box. Now to establish how tall your rocker box is going to be, you need to really probably know the weight of the rest of your components. So if you're going and using our YouTube videos as a step-by-step -step guide on how to do the truss style telescope, you probably want to rearrange the videos to where the rocker box is last because the weights of the remainder of the components is going to be very important in determining where the balance point is on your Dobsonian telescope, which dictates how tall your rocker box is going to ultimately be. So without getting too much into that, I would just suggest either emailing me um, offline here, or you could just Google find balance point of Dobsonian telescope, and that will tell you uh, a simple equation on how to determine that. But since we already know all the weights, and I've made many of these before, I know that this particular rocker box is going to be 13 and a half inches tall. So what I've done is I've taken a measurement to 13 and a half inches, and then we need to know how thick, or how um, wide, rather, the mirror box is, so it's 19 and 13 sixteenths, and so I want to immediately add one and a half to that because I know that my sheet goods that I'm going to use for the rocker box are uh, three quarters inch thick. So that's the one and a half inches that we add to the 19 and 13 sixteenths. And then we also want a quarter of an inch of play on the outside of the mirror box whenever it rests inside the rocker box. So my final number on the width of my rocker box pieces is going to be 21 and 11 sixteenths. Now you're going to look at that and you're going to think that's an eighth inch too wide. Well, I do that on purpose because remember, I'm joining the sides and the front and the back with finger joints. And so I leave them about an eighth of an inch proud. So that's how I get the 21 and 11 sixteenths. So what I've done is I have just transferred those drawings here. We've got the front, which isn't going to be quite as tall as the sides because it doesn't need to be. So the front, I believe on this one is about, gosh, I think it's nine inches. And so my sides again are 13 and a half inches. So I've got one side, two sides, and then the back is only two and a quarter of an inch thick because this is where that mirror box is going to pivot out of. So we want to keep this as thin as possible without going so thin that it doesn't pro provide any support at all. Ideally, the back and the front and the sides would all be the same height to make as rigid a box as possible. But we have to uh, do some give and take because we don't want it to be eight feet tall and we don't want it to weigh 300 pounds. So what we do is we make the back lower and I've just found that two and a quarter inches is perfect for 18 inch and below. So that's what I'm doing. So basically what I'll do here is I'll do the same task. I won't even film it. I'm just going to cut these to length. Just want to show you this is how I drew this out. Um, I've used half inch plywood before on these rocker box for a 16 inch telescope. And what you'll find is it's just not rigid enough. You get a lot of springy action in the eyepiece because so much weight and so much force is going down on that rocker box it's just not rigid enough to support the mirror box in the mirror so i recommend three quarters of an inch uh plywood if you want to go you know as ultimately lightweight as possible the front and the back you could probably get away with making half an inch just make sure the sides are at least three quarters of an inch but even in doing that i have had mixed results we'll say depending on the thickness of the mirror and the height of the telescope so rather than being sorry i just play it safe and i make all four sides three quarters of an inch thick so i will get to cutting on that now and then we'll go and show making the arc for the bearings okay so we're back to the rocker box here i have all four pieces of the rocker box cut out or at least all four that will make the sides of the box on this side here we have the two sides and then of course we have the bottom piece and the front piece now, what I've done here is I've made a little jig to show you how I mark the arc that I'm going to use to cut out um, the portion that the bearings are going to ride on. So what I like to do is make sure I've got my compass set to the correct 
measurement and the diameter of my bearings are going to be 24 inches so I want this arc to be slightly larger than 24 inches so just slightly because we're going to use 1 8 inch thick Teflon for it to ride on so I'm going to make it just about an eighth of an inch thicker and I'll sand that out slightly so it'll be slightly larger than just an eighth of an inch so what I will do is I will set my compass pardon me my compass for 12 and a 16th inches and I like to gang cut things anytime I have an opportunity so I will take the two sides of the rocker box as you can see here and I tape them together now I want to be as exact as possible so I'm actually going to tape the outsides out so the insides are going to kind of kiss each other. That's where they're going to mate is the insides. And then the outside is going to be out. And now I'm going to mark my arc for my bearings. And I've got the other two pieces to make sure that my compass is going to ride on the same height that the two pieces of rocker box are. Okay. And then what I've done here is I've put just a straight edge on both sides to make sure I'm square. And then I'll mark the middle, the exact center, and that's where I'm going to put my compass whenever I make that arc, ultimately. And again, I'm not telling you how to figure your the height of your rocker box. You'll need to do that if you don't know how yet, um, based on an equation that will determine where your pivot point is going to be because it's going to your rocker box is basically as high as it needs to be based on your mirror box and where the bearings are placed <clears throat> so I'm basically just filming the mechanical aspects of um, the jigs and the processes I use to cut and make the telescopes so I'll go ahead and film the making of this arc real quick and then I'll go to the bandsaw and cut them out Okay, so again, here's my little jig, very simple thing that I'm going to use to make my arc. So I've got my compass, again, at 12 and a 16th inches, so that's basically going to be 24 and an eighth circle, and the bearings are 24 inches, and then the Teflon's an eighth of an inch thick, so that's where I get those numbers. Now, I know that my arc is going to go down from the top of the rocker box, 2 and 3 16 inches, just for this particular scope, that's how it works out. So I will place the pivot point here at the center of one side of the jig, and then I have already made a scribe 2 and 3 16 from the top of the rocker, and I'll just make sure I'm passing through that. So, and then I want to make sure that I am square, which I am. So now I'm going to make my mark, and I will... And there we go. And now to ensure that this is square and it is in the center of the rocker box, that's pretty important because you don't want your telescope too far back or too far forward. If it's too far forward, you'll never get completely uh, vertical. You'll never get to be able to see anything completely vertical. If it's too far back, you can end up tipping this telescope too far vertical. And so it'll go too much the other way. So there's, there's, just make sure it's right in the middle. And as long as everything is square on your rocker box, then it's correctly positioned. So another way to check this after the fact, after you've made that arc, is just take your tri-square, set it to where the arc starts on one side. And for me, that is just under four inches. I mean, looks like three and seven eighths inches. And so we got three and seven eighths on that side, three and seven eighths on that side. So that's going to be your final, you know, measure twice, cut once type deal before you go to the bandsaw. Or since you've got this arc made, you could simply use a jigsaw and cut this arc out. There's no, no, no reason to use a router on this. Um, since we are gang cutting, we've got everything taped together. It's cold in the shop, so my tape's starting to come up. Um, use double-sided tape if you, if you can. That's always the best. But since we're gang cutting, we know that both sides of the rocker box are going to be precise because we're doing them at the same time. As long as your blade is square 
And that's why I use a bandsaw because it's extremely rigid and it always stays square. But even after I make this cut, since there's no way I can, you know, perfectly cut a 12 and 16th inch uh, diameter arc, um, what I'll do is I'll take this gang cut. I do have a perfect line drawn. I'm going to cut just to the inside of that line. And then afterwards, I'll go over to the oscillating sander and I'll go right to that line. Now, if you have neither a jigsaw, an oscillating sander, a bandsaw, nothing like that, you can just, you know, set up this same type of a jig and a circle cutting jig on your router and cut it with your router. Um, but again, anytime you can cut two things at once, I always find that to be the most accurate and repeatable. So that's what I'll demonstrate doing here. So it's next it's to the uh, bandsaw.